morning. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so we're now here in Cape Town. As you can see, Susu is here behind us. We had a lot of requests for, oh, there's a seal. Uh -huh. <laughs> we had a lot of requests to, from our followers to do a walkthrough. And there's a lot of walkthroughs of the Leopard 45, or actually any other boat as well, available on YouTube. So we thought we're going to do it a little bit different this time. It will be freaking Pietro style, the Sisu style. <laughs> Let's go show you. Come with us. This is the long-awaited video about Sisu Specs. It's going to be a long video, so I would suggest you go get a, a Coca-Cola or maybe a rum or maybe Coke and rum with ice or without ice. Sit back and enjoy. where all the cooking gets done. So far these knives haven't gone flying anywhere. They seem quite sturdy and neither is any of those. Our gas stove and oven. We brought our little herb garden along as well. Nav station which at this point in time is the book station and there is the main saloon. And last but not least, the forward top bit. This is such a peaceful environment. If you can just look at the view currently, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now we go to the port side. Okay, port side, aft cabin which is lovely, we can space. Good, LOL. Moet jij in die bad sit? En dan het hy klonk klein goedies ook. Nee, ek moet so'n bakkie kraai met water in, en dan sit ek een dag po. Poot forward cabin. You'll notice this bed is quite higher than the other one. It's got a double drawer at the bottom. Another flight of stairs. On the starboard side is the owner's cabin version. Starboard aft cabin. That would be frickin' mine. Bedroom. And as you can see, plenty, plenty, plenty room for frick. It is just so spacious and we've got actually so much storage um, I think we're gonna have enough we're starting on experimenting with storage bins but we'll do another episode on that I'm um, going forward into the forward head which would be ours I just put the laundry bag inside the shower but this is nice and big and spacious And inside your ladies, we have a washer-dryer combination, which is such a bliss.
So now for the water maker. The water maker is a Spectra, and I moved it from the aft cabin to the forward cabin. It sits now here in front, and everything is nicely together now. So if you look here, that is the the main Spectra unit which will control everything. So the controller is there. Here is all the cylinders for it and the cycling and so the cylinders is nicely tucked now away it's not in anyone's way while uh, the spectra system and the cylinders is there all the filters have to be below the water line or something like that so here is my filters so everything is nicely put together then you can see it's not yet commissioned so the water maker is Oh, nicely tucked in here. So all the pumps is here, and the fresh and water, salt water. By the way, um, I also did provision for a genset. Although I do not have a genset, you will see that I do have here already everything pro provided for a genset. So here is the the seacock for the genset. So the exhaust uh, the the water cooling system for the gen set is already here over here we've got a bidet a bum gun and this bum gun you can just open it it's fresh water so this is to reduce the toilet paper on the boat uh, hopefully we will not have the same dilemmas as Dallas I'm sure we're going to have the same <laughs> dilemmas as does than Dallas had but this is what we also installed afterwards and it is this is 100% fresh water we also installed a fresh water, salt water system. So the toilet flashes normally with, with salt water, but when we know we're not going to use the toilets for a long time, like over a long passage or more than a week or something like that, then we can switch to fresh water and we flash it. So we fill the pipes and the, the, the system with fresh water so that the marine water, all the little animals and bacteria and things that's living inside seawater if they die it, it's, it's getting very stinky so at this moment if we don't want that to happen we just fresh uh, flash it with fresh water over here is our boat server so i've got a little storage device that's connected on on a wi-fi that's over here so this is our wi-fi booster that we have but it can also pick up not Wi-Fi but uh, 3G and 4G as well and then give us Wi-Fi in the room so in the whole boat all our instruments everything will be connected to this one so they can update their grip files they can update their software if the software is there um, so that is the one side and we also connected to this to this little storage device so from from this storage device we will have all our movies all our files all the documentation and I'm an IT guy, so it is redundant. We can lose one of these drives and it will still be working. Um, we just need to be able to replace one of the drives before the other one goes. But it has redundancy built into it. Over here we have the, the, the switch port that we can control all the equipment. We have a, up at the alum, we have a similar um, remote, so we can control the radio from here. This is a ref cockpit refrigerator and it is actually over here this is a cockpit refrigerator and we also have a 12 volt we will show it now a 12 volt one which was our trusty camping the 12 volt dc is all our charging devices like this we have more 12 volt uh, USB charging devices, there's about six of them over there. So we have two wash down sections, one in front and one in a stern. Uh, in, in I see shore power, if we want to charge the batteries, we can, we can switch on the shore power. We, we have been now off the shore power for almost eight weeks, right? Um, I don't know what that is for, it's just to say something went wrong. We don't have a gen set, but if we do insert, um, if we do plug the gen set in, we can do the gen set. Then shore power, this one is just to provide this column here of electricity. So if the Victron system is failing, then we just switch this one on. 
So we will basically, I don't want to switch this one off, but like you see, we cannot move it because this one is now on. So you can either have that one or that one. This one means we switch on the Victron system for us. We transfer all the electricity. This one is not named yet, but this is our compressor. The water heater, this is just now for starboard, and this is all the AC outlets. This is the two air conditioners over here. So port and starboard. So we have four alternators, a lot of spares, I think. <laughs> this is the two port side um, alternators and they connected to a sterling which I will discuss in another separate video all the electronics and charging and things we will do in another video and this is the starboard side this little bagger over here is a two wind generators so we can see what is the wind generators bringing in this is a big management system for for the Victorin system so all the batteries all the charging when it should start charging and not is over there this is what we can see how much watts we use, how much watch we get in, and whether it's charging or not charging. Also, we've got now a Mayday call sign. So if something does go wrong, we can just repeat it word for word. So we put our call sign there, then we put our MSMSI number there, and then also what you need to say. My position is, and then we get the GPS coordinates from here. We've got our Mayday procedure over here. This is our chart or nav station over here um, we're not using it that much but we've got a spare radio icon for the handheld so we can go with tapex or if the main radio breaks or the fuse goes and we don't have a spare fuse we can always use this one as well so it has all the stations could program this is Pietru's work she's still doing lots of insurance stuff here is the uh, our primary iridium go system and here's our backup one so we have a backup one we still need to put it in tinfoil this is the Raymarine this one is exactly the same as one on top there and at the alum so we can we can look at the charts we can look at the um, how the marine looks like and where we are um, so this is this is I will explain maybe a little bit later about this one but you, we can set anchor watches here, we can also set anchor watches here. We find that Garmin anchor watches was the best for us. Um, this one mainly is used, this is a forward looking sonar that we put on. So, Raymarine doesn't have a forward looking sonar. This is the forward, so we had to install a forward looking sonar and we had to use the Garmin system. But now this one is looking, we have the charts on here and we have charts on here. So we have two different charge systems actually. So it, it's a backup as well, so for <laughs> it worked out quite well that this one reads all the other instruments and this one is reading all the instruments and the alum is reading all the instruments. All that the Raymarine cannot read is basically the, the forward looking sonar. So this one can read the radar, it can read the, the, the forward looking sonar, the side scans and the forward scans. So it's actually quite cool. This is it for the nav station. As you can see, um, Leopard provides quite a, quite a lot of protection as far as um, blocking the sun from the outside. But um, it doesn't protect the heat from coming through the actual sun. So we decided to go for shades on the outside. We'll show you quickly what that looks like. You can see, we can see very clearly from the inside. But as you can see, um, there is a huge amount of sun that comes in, so this just becomes unbearably hot in here. And we're still in South Africa, so can you just imagine when we're up in the Met? So that's why we decided to go with the outside shades. But just look at the difference it makes. It makes a humongous amount. And it's so much cooler. It's just a total, uh, uh, just a total have to be, has to be. So over and above that, we've got the shade now, which is lovely and comfortable. And we went for further privacy with these blinds, adding also extra shade and extra privacy. And there we go, there's our blinds and our shades. Over here is the battery systems and the seat here. If you look there, over on that side, this is where all our harnesses and, and other like emergency equipment is to, to put out. We will discuss that later. Here is our grab bag as well. So this one also needs to come out if we need to come out. So below here is the, is the lithium batteries. So if you look. 
and it's not much to see, but just a lot of batteries. So we've got here four batteries, and then inside there is another battery. So, and they are all 200 amp batteries. It has a nice place to put the drip tray in, so we can put it in and everything just comes to one point, which is brilliant for us, so no more. The second thing about the, the Weber is that it is smaller. We can now run it from our gas inside, so all the safety measurements from the boat is now also applied onto the Weber. So, and the main reason is, is that the burners is now much smaller. That other braai was about this size and it was big and it was good if the boat is full of full of people. Um, but if it's just me and Pietro, then we're not going to use that much gas. So we first of all it less fat is dripping, the gas is used from the boat, not anymore a little cylinder standing here. And also we don't use that much much gas. Uh, Tipex is in a way, so we have to drop this boat, the David, a little bit to the side so that Tipex can get out of the way and then we can start rising. Pietro and I, we are avid divers. Um, I'm a dive master, capable of instructing people as well. And I've done around 300 dives. So we, we love diving and we've got a full dive center basically on board. It starts with the, the four sets of cylinders. Um, this is addition to the factory and it is well made. Um, I, I really can recommend this welder. It's Higo, his name is Higo, but you can talk to Marcel from Leopard as well. It fits nicely, it's, it blends in with the with the, um, the stern fittings, so it's well made. We actually have a very a complete dive center um, inside here. We've got our Bavaria compressor. It can do 80 liters a minute. So, and it's also run from electricity with the lithium. It's not that noisy. It's like a compressor, but at least no diesel fumes, no petrol fumes, no, no fumes. So you're pretty safe where we are here. And it fits nicely in here, except that I cannot get my hands to the to the damp valve. So we have to every time lift it up a little bit so we can get to the to the damp valves of the, the moisture. We also opted for an eight-man life raft. <coughs> uh, this is the Viking life raft. We used a different set of, of belts or mechanisms to actually fasten it on here. It is held together by two, two lines. This one line I can just pull here and it will open up and then it will release and that one just pull here and it will open up and it will release. Then it will fall over. We've got a painter line here on top um, that is connected to the boat. So from here, if it drops off, then we just need to pull the painter line and then the life raft will deploy. So I think this is a much better option to go with this, to say, all right, I've got two lines that is protecting and keeping it there. Otherwise, it will just fall off. If it accidentally triggers, it will fall off. Um, I was thinking of hydrostatic release as well, but Again, this place at the back here is getting quite wet when we go um, downwind sailing. It is, especially if you go fast, then it's becoming quite wet. And maybe that hydrostatic release might release accidentally and then we lose our life raft. We will not lose it, but we will <laughs> deploy it. Um, and I don't think I can put it back. It's one of those genies that comes out of the bottle and cannot be put back. This is where everything happens. Uh, and this is me and Pietro's favorite place to sit. Sit right here and we can watch everywhere. As you can see we've got the nice enclosures. We even rolled these up just for the demonstration but they come right down to the bottom there. In photos you would have seen it already. The one in front we also opened it completely now but it also just has a little a smiley face zip here that we can unzip here. And then this one is also so you can use this and we can we can communicate to the outside. So we roll this one up. So it's a very nice cockpit. You can see quite a lot, you can see quite far. 
I like it. Something that's definitely a problem is that we cannot see that side. Let me show you. From my side, but you cannot see that side. You cannot see the bow. You can see this side very nicely, but you cannot see that side or that side. So that's why I prefer when I come into dock, I prefer to stand somewhere here and I can clearly see where that point is and I can also very clearly see where my stern is. So this is the position that I normally try to dock, so to my starboard side. But we did something to assist us with that and we will show you right now. You cannot look up there, the sun is right in your eyes. <laughs> So if you look up there, you can see there's a little Raymarine camera or weatherproof camera right there and we'll show you right now what we've done with that. This is now the command center, or in sailor's terminology, the helm station. So from here we've got our big helm, the steering wheel, or the helm. We've got our engines here if you want to go, and you can have two separate engines, which is a very, very plus point for a catamaran. This is a Raymarine Pro, the Axiom Pro, um, 12 inch, and we replaced the, the 9 inch that, is, that you saw down below. This is our chain counter, so we have automatic chain counter for us. We can also control our um, radio from here. There's our little horn. We can transfer the fuel from one tank to another tank on this side. And then we also have a little red light for the cockpit at, at night. So this is our autopilot, so we can also do autopilot. This autopilot is actually pretty cool. It can also do, it can steer according to a wind vane. So when you're in wind vane mode, it will always keep the, the, the wind at a certain angle to, to the, the vessel. And it will steer according to that. So you only need to set your sails once. And if your sails is set, then it will follow it. Of course, it means if the wind shift, you will go off course. But if you do the trade winds or steady wind, then it is actually very perfect. So we use that one quite often. It also has an auto tack, so we can just press two buttons and it will auto tack by itself. Or press that one and it will tack to port side. So this is it. And our depth is, is already been calibrated, so it is at water height. And this one and this one is now the same. But what happens with this one, if, if, you, if you zoom in, you can see this one is already giving us new contours. And this is a feature, the new feature from Raymarine that as I go, it will update my map for me. And this map will be uploaded to the internet. And I will also get, so my, my information will go to the rest of the world and the rest of the world will also update my maps. So it's like, it's, it's quite cool. Crowdsourcing or something like that. This is our two main, main, main machines. Um, this is our winches and they're pretty, pretty cool. They are also electronic, if you look down there, we can flip it open and we can press our feet or we can just grab this handle over there and grab the handle so it is electric or manual, so we can do it electric or manual. And this is actually quite cool, very big winches, we also got a winch over here for our main sheets. If you look, if you look at the back here, yeah, if you follow these lines, this is our main sheet lines and you will see it's a triangle over there. You saw that they are in a nice little triangle, which means we don't accidentally jibe that often. We, we do often <laughs> accidentally jibe, especially in those huge Atlantic swells that we're experiencing here. But if you do jibe, then those triangle prevents, it's almost like a jibe preventer. Not 100% a jibe preventer, but it does help you that if it does come over, it, it doesn't, the boom doesn't go boom. So that is for our main sheets. So this this year, these winches as well we can use for the main sheets. We can also take it from here, we can take the, one of these lines, take it over and use any one of these two main sheets. Winches. From here, huh? Winches. Winches, to the big electric winches. Um, 
from here, this is our two Genoa sheets. So it's very easy to, to tack and to, to, to jibe. Um, this is the main alert for the main sail. So we use it to raise and drop the, the main sail. Here's our reefs, reef one and reef two. And this is our filler. So, and this is the spinnaker lines. From here, I'll show you later on how, how they are connected. But this is where the spinnaker lines is coming in. And from this side, it comes through here. It goes all the way to, to those blocks over there. It comes through here, it comes through here, and then on the, onto this winch. So the code D and the code zero, we can also manage from here, right from here. And we actually made a video where we actually jibed um, without actually going to the front, without furling in. And it worked perfectly. We've done everything from here. So you might have heard in the past that you drive you don't sail, you drive a, a, a catamaran like a tank. And we will show you in another video how to park a catamaran, but in much more detail than any of the other videos that I've ever seen. So keep on watching. Something that I'm really impressed with is, is this a rope bag? It's, I know it's a line thing, but at this moment those are useless. And anything that doesn't have a purpose is a rope according to me. But look at look at this thing. It's nicely done. It's very deep. All the lines is going in here and they are very nicely tucked away. Um, we're very impressed with the neatness and the professionalism of the guy that did the enclosures for us. A lot of attention to detail. Um, Frick and myself being hectically OCD. So little things that other people would normally not think about are these little pockets so once you've rolled your, your screen down you don't have this floating around the whole time banging and smacking so you just neatly put them inside here and they're all nice and neatly tucked away and the extra thing that he's done as well you can see it forms a nice square there's nothing putting skew he's put like a, 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 a iron beam inside here into, into this pocket which just keeps the whole thing sturdy and more secure. Okay, one little thing that we had a problem with initially is uh, when we went up to Saldana Bay, I never knew it could get so cold on the sea. The wind came in behind our legs underneath the seat here at the home station. So very innovatively he designed this whole panel here that also zips up and down so you can take it off or leave it on as you wish when it gets too hot. And he's done a perfect job. We are totally chuffed with it. Super, super easy to enclose. It looks like it could be a laborious job, but it's just merely clicking these panels undone. And there you go. Done with the zip. Oh. Go down. And then you've got these straps that situated all along the bottom. Just under and over. And they hold it down pretty pretty well. So there's about four or five of them down here. Okay, so we've got the shaded net and then we've got the glass glass window on the inside as well. This is the only thing that we're not hundred percent happy with. You can roll this up and then you can see through but we would have preferred the other way around just to roll up the plastic and leave this down in hot areas but apparently that would jeopardize the sturdiness of the whole structure okay this is a, a, a lip thing that the whole shade curtain slides into so what we've done is we've got as i said an extra set that we're gonna then you just slide the whole thing out again and you slide the other one in that's why you've got these buttons here so those are merely shade cloths the, the one on the off goes all the way to the back of the dinghy and the ones on the sides goes all the way to the side rails we've got three anchors from mantis the one is down there below you cannot really see it now it's a mantis anchor coming in there so we have a bridle, we have a remote control for the, for the anchor, for the, the gypsy, the, the windless. And we also had a, a, a chain counter which can also control the up and down of the anchor. So that is our main anchor. 
The main anchor is a 38 kilogram mantis anchor. The main water tanks, so a few 400 liters each. So in total is 800 liters of, of water. And then I store it here inside the forward locker. So it's a, it's a very heavy thing. Inside here, um, we've got our code D cell and our code zero cell. So the code D and code zero is both inside here. You will see all of these controls here is already there for the generator. So we are ready for the generator, but we did not opt for the generator. So normally the generator will be here. And as you can see, there's no generator here. What we also have here is our little dinghy anchor. The picks have its own little mantis anchor. And look at this. So, so it has a little anchor like this. And we can just assemble it. Here we go. And this one goes like this. And here we've got for Tepix its own romantic anchor. <laughs> We decided to go with black lines. Not only do they look better, but ladies, trust you me, they're much more kinder on the hands. They're much softer, flexible, and much quicker to clean off. I will later have a full video just on all electrical specifications like the solar panels and how it was configured and what the Victorin system is all about. Keep on watching.